future of our children is in the STEM area. Over two million tech jobs are still open in the United States and these are all high paying jobs. This is absolutely where the value in the economy is going. It's, it's you know, what, what's happening between someone's ears. It's not just about the students. If we don't invest in the educators, it kind of falls short of what we can gain out of it for the kids. So the future of our state is really connected to STEM and we need children to grow up and be able to protect our natural resources and grow our economy. You know, our hope, our, our desire is that three to five years from now that we have a more educated student body. Hopefully we'll have even more kids that decide, yeah, this is something I could get into, this is something I could do well in. We hope this helps us accomplish the goals that we've all set, whether it's at Prosperity 2020, and Utah Technology Council, what parents really want to see their students do, what's happening in higher education, what business leaders ultimately really need as far as workforce. At the end of the day, I think we all understand that it's about a quality of life, it's about providing options for our kids. We get it. We want, we want something better for them. If we have our students that are trained to think in technical terms, to be able to handle the science, Make sure it's in the, middle for the mechanical concepts, the engineering concepts of ideas, then we will be very well situated for the future. Finding the cures or the improvements or the whatever will make our society better in the future is still going to be based on science, technology, engineering, and math. I think one of the things that started this initiative was businesses and high-tech industries who came forward and said, we just can't get enough qualified workforce. You know, we're not, we're not seeing a pathway to sustain our businesses. It is like chemical weathering and that's exactly what we're modeling. So for our children, the STEM areas are a huge career opportunity. More and more every year, the value of a STEM education is increasing. For our industry, having children grow up to be able to fulfill those positions is also a huge opportunity. And the fact that STEM talent wasn't being taken up just by STEM companies, but by non-STEM companies, because who doesn't need analytical and critical thinking skills out of their, their staff? And every career to that, to that point are really STEM careers. Our responsibility for all children is to make sure that they are college and career ready. What about the right with this? That's not trite, that is really the reality of what we're trying to do. Making students believe that they can do it, that they have confidence once they see some success, and then showing them a pathway where they can continue to, through their education, that they can achieve their educational goals and objectives. There's room in STEM occupations for just about everyone. So let's capture the attention of our kids who really want to get in and do things. And they think in terms of not just figures and numbers on a chalkboard, they think in terms of how do things work? How do they come together? The 3D printer and then... Um, and that means when we say all children, we need to mean all children. Start printing it out in about five minutes when it, when it heats up. We need to mean it doesn't matter what part of the state they live in, what part of a community they live in, every single child needs to have access to this. One of the words that's so important to us is engagement. The students are engaged. The learning is relevant. The students are excited about it. In fact, my son came home the other day and told me what he's done in science. We learned about eyes, Dad. You know, what do you mean? So he tells me about refraction, color, what? Yeah, everything. And I think we're gonna learn about ears tomorrow. And explaining it to me so well, but with enthusiasm and excitement because of, that, of what his teacher is doing to engage him in the classroom. If a student should get into a STEM pathway, then all of a sudden it opens a door to something they hadn't thought about that may not necessarily be STEM, by all means, it's fine. It's still a success, it's still a win. I think one of the things that STEM has really brought out is that still the most important thing in the classroom is the teacher. It's a whole process in putting things together and coming out with something. And we come out with food for the plant. My mom's an educator and uh, she has pointed out to me a number of times, Steve, we really don't need legislators telling us how to do our job. Volume, volume's the same. It's not about are you a good teacher or not. It's about does this product help you? Does this technology and the ability 
to work within your own professional learning community with this support. Does it help you, not are you good? What do you think? Do you still think it's an MSAC? Keeping abreast of changes in instructional theory and then also just changes in how what we know about how the world works are incredibly critical and perhaps in no areas so much as science and technology. Explain it. We often get asked about STEM in elementary. Is it important? Do kids even care? Well, of course they care. This is where the building blocks actually start. Wow, a real life cricket. This is where those early projects actually begin, whether it's in science or mathematics. So those elementary teachers need to understand the important role they play in helping set those kids up positively for the careers that they're gonna be interested in and get excited about. What are you gonna do with those? We have wonderful teachers in Utah and wonderful wow. teachers across the nation, but things are changing. And so every teacher needs professional learning in order to be able to enhance the classroom for the children. So can you be more precise, like ex try and figure out exactly when, does that make sense? We understand that for our teachers to do well, um, they need training. There's definitely in this state no lack of desire, no lack of hard work. Um, what we're hearing a lot from teachers is give us some substance, give us some know-how on things. And so we, we determined that this would be a great way to do professional development, is to give it in highly relevant fields. One of the things that we've realized is very important for Utah educators is to see teachers in Utah classrooms with Utah students. Seven and three, and three squash. Three squash, and it equals what? Okay, ten. Ten all together. So we've agreed to produce 50 videos each school year that feature Utah teachers demonstrating STEM techniques. What do they do with their kids? We'll go into other classrooms and videotape other classrooms as well where teachers are utilizing and integrating STEM so that everybody understands what it is. Graph to where the 300 is on the very bottom. Like that one, you can see it. Oh, you need to exit, you have to right click on that. Uh... So often, all you hear about education as an educator is what you're doing wrong. And this project has the opportunity to say, no, 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 here's what we're doing right. And we're using that as the tool. STEM is everywhere. It's part of all that we do. And that's why districts have said, we can't just focus on a few teachers. Every teacher is a STEM teacher now. That's what we're about. We're about supporting educators and, and bringing tools to the classroom that make their day easier, that make it better. So that's what we've heard from our teachers is, look, we want to do this, but give us some more training, give us some more opportunities to where we can teach this concept, to where we can reach the students and help them get excited about the subject matter. That's what they get up in the morning to do, right? To go to, go to the classroom and have a good day with the kids and feel like their presence made a difference for their students by being there and, and doing everything that they can to help.